Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com crowd forecast news for November 27th, 2023. We are recording this at 1 p.m. Eastern time, and this is episode number 410. So my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com. And today I have arranged for Norman Hallett to join us. You should be seeing his screen right now. And the option professor is back to moderate. I'm going to turn it over to him. Okay, thanks, and uh, welcome, everybody. We have a end-of-the-year meeting here, end of the month, and it could be pretty exciting as we end up the month of November, which has been a big, big up move in the stock market, no doubt about that. Uh, Norm Hallett's with us today. Norm's going to share his ideas on a lot of the commodity area as well. And, of course, you know, things like oil and currency and, and, uh, and metals, you know, they have an effect on everything anyway, so it's good to know about. Uh, Norm, background on yourself, please. Let me look back. I, I'm, uh, I'm right now I'm beside myself, so let me, get, let me look back here. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I've started actually in the option business. Yeah, I, I actually started in the uh, <clears throat> nightclub business and the restaurant business, and I even worked for Arthur Murray's dance studio. Uh, I sold the introductory lessons. Uh, so I have, uh, you know, so um, I, in any of the Latin markets, I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, you know, when I, uh, when I trade anything that... Uh, uh, that involves uh, dance steps, but I I also have um, uh, in 19 and I'm gonna this is an important part of my my experience for this time of year. I started in the uh, option business as a uh, retail broker, sitting on the phone talking to people uh, to try to, to try to get them to invest money in options, and it was uh, the the last week of October, last week of November. In uh, 1979, I had it was all new to me. I, I had graduated the University of Cincinnati with a math degree, uh, but I, um, uh, you know, I decided I, I really wanted to get into the markets and trading, and I really never left. Um, but uh, that that fateful couple of months from the last part of November through the middle part of January was some of the strongest months for the gold and silver, it's when the Hunt brothers cornered the gold and silver, the silver market, and uh, caused gold and silver to uh, to really take off. It was the first time it had reached $800. Uh, and it was all during this time of year that we're now spending time in. So I, every time I get to this time of year, I, I get excited uh, because this is really what kept me in this business through all the pain of learning to trade and all the pain of, of trying to shake traders who I'm training to pay attention to the mental and emotional part of trading. <laughs> and that's painful. It's painful for me to see that traders don't, um, uh, it's the last thing that they give credence to. Uh, and the basics, I think we're going to talk a little bit about the basics today, if we can, Jim. But um, it's it's that, that move in gold and that move in silver and seeing a $10,000 option investments turn to $160,000 uh, in just a couple of weeks, uh, convinced me that this is the place that I wanted to spend time in. And I've really never left. Um, in 1981, uh, I married uh, a woman who uh, is a mentalist, not a, not a, not a, uh, not a, uh, not a mentalist like predicting the future mentalist, but somebody who is a subconscious trainer and is, was helping um, those that came back from the war and others, uh, students to be better students with the mental and emotional parts of life. And uh, in 19, or in, in 2000, we joined forces and uh, created the Subconscious Training Corporation, uh, which focused on uh, the disciplined trader part of the firm, which is all about helping traders with the mental and emotional. I did that for almost, um, wow, uh, uh, till about f five years ago, where we realized we were training traders to be very disciplined in trading, but they had lousy trading plans. So we were training them to be uh, dead set on losing. <laughs> so yeah. since I had previously <laughs> written uh, earlier in my career on the met uh, on, on uh, building trading plans, I decided to start building trading plans. So the last five years, I've had a, du a dual focus. And that second focus is helping traders with the simplicity of the basics of trading plans and um, and how to follow them. And our, our trading plan, Loaded Gun, is, um, uh, well, you know, and most that have, uh, uh, in the business know that the Loaded Gun is a very 
uh, res well-respected trading plan for those who are struggling and looking for some simplicity in their life. So that's really where I'm at. And um, um, I live in Parkland, Florida, where nobody knew where we were till 17 kids uh, got uh, shot um, from some crazy guy um, here in Parkland, Florida. And so, um, you know, I've, I've had, uh, you know, when I see th these kinds of things on TV, I have a special appreciation. I guess most of us now, almost in all parts of the world, have an appreciation for it because th these mass things, whether um, it was wars or, or, or net, net senseless shootings, uh, it becomes part of life. And, um, and you, you really have to start to figure on everything when you're looking at markets and, and risking money. So uh, that's where I am. And um, I'm really glad to be here today. Yeah, and I'm hoping uh, we'll go through some of the basic fundamentals of the disciplined uh, trader because uh, that mental part, I mean, um, no matter how long you've been in the market, you can find yourself doing some very silly things that really can be attributed to a uh, lack of discipline or, you know, just uh, the mental part, you know, where you just forget what you're supposed to remember. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, what market do you have up there right now? We want to start out with uh, the S&P 500. This is the S&P 500. <clears throat> and um, you, uh, do you still ask those questions about um, uh, where? Oh, yeah, where, oh, yeah, it is Monday. Why don't we go old school here? And what do you think the market will be at on Friday? And what's your confidence level? Well, my, my, where I believe the market will be on Friday is um, just, right around where right between these two lines that you're on really um and um i, I think that the the small bodies that we've seen here in the last few weeks although they're they're, they're on an upward trajectory um they're I, I think it pretends what we're going to see this week and that's a lot of inaction in the market um and um and and a uh, kind of a crawl one way or the other today's Today's uh, action is pretty much uh, demonstrative of that, if that's the way to say it. But I, um, I, I just think we're we're about to um, follow the basics in the market, which which would make my guess. Uh, if I had to guess a number, I'd say we're um, somewhere in that forty five twenty level, forty five fifty level. That, that's where I think we're going to wind up. Right, and you feel pretty good about it. Yeah, I do feel pretty good about it. I think it's really a, a, a better than 50-50 chance. Uh, although, you know, I look at some of these basketball stats and I see, uh, you know, if somebody can uh, can make 42% of their three-point shots, they're paid, uh, you know, millions a year, even though they miss half of them. So <laughs> I could not be wrong. Not as bad as the baseball guys hitting uh, 220 and getting 40 million. Oh, that's right. Well, that's the, you know, when we were in the sales business, um, when, uh, because really when you're, when you weren't for large option firms or I worked for Payne Weber also, it's really about selling unless you're the, in the research department. So it's about selling everybody's research and, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that whole thing of, of um, <laughs> anyway, it's another conversation, but and another, uh, and another world and another time, right? <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, I, I, I visit every once in a while. Of course, those places are closed now. But um, now I've you know, got a question for you here, though. I've been listening to some of the Elliott Wave guys on a couple of markets so on this market. They are saying that basically one of two things uh, are occurring. Either we just had an ABC correction that ended last October mm -hmm. at thirty five hundred. And mm -hmm. now we're in the process of five waves to the upside into new highs, mm -hmm. or this is still a one, two, three, uh, uh, you know, counter trend move that is going to end uh, relatively soon. And the, and the, and the speed of the rally is more, uh, you know, similar to a bear market rally which is fast and furious, like we saw in 2007, 2009, which is followed by significant selling. So those are the two schools of thoughts that I'm kind of grappling with. One is that uh, they counted incorrectly and that the low of last October was a bottom C. And now we're in five waves up, which is going to take us into Lord knows where. Or 
these spike backs up uh, are really just a, a, a one, two, three counter trend. And now we're going to go five waves down. And, and the five waves down are going to be substantial. Uh, what's your feeling on those two schools? Yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, Elliot, in general, uh, you got to give it some credibility. You got to listen when, when an Elliot, you know, whether it's Jody or, or who else you're referring to, um, uh, are, are analyzing, uh, you know, that have some chops as far as Elliot is concerned. The, the problem that I've always had with Elliot, uh, or, or the reason I always mm -hmm. leave Elliot in the in the background of my of my trading, uh, it's one of the first things I look at. And then I, 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 I start to narrow down those wide uh, choices because you've just given me two, you know, uh, Im impressive moves to one side or the other. But you know, I don't know if it's it's because Elliot, if you've ever seen Elliot work live uh, and look at a new chart um, and you come back a few weeks later, they've changed most of the of the lines because things things have changed. So right. things are always you're always looking for. Um, a completion of something to start another leg. And once you've confirmed that completion, then you can pretty much say during that leg that that leg will continue until further notice. So, you know, I, I, when I look at the gold chart, when I look at Elliot's work in gold and I look at Elliot's work in, um, uh, in the stock market indices, uh, you, you know, they're all pointing to me that they're all pointing higher. Most of the stuff that I've seen. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if you're looking at moving averages, you cannot debate it that all the averages are under the price and rising. So that is a very, very tough bar to get over uh, to get really bearish. So uh, the scenarios that they're, they're painting on the negative side, which is that we're not going to break uh, probably above 47.25, whatever the former high was, and that mm -hmm. the downside is going to be very significant, <clears throat> would always be confirmed by the moving averages at some point. So obviously I'm from the school of, I'd rather see the moving averages pointing my direction and then listen to that rather than fight the, the moving averages and hope that's right. You know what I mean? You know, with, 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 which, which brings, brings me to one of the things that I like to look at when I'm even, you know, of course, we're looking at a daily chart here. But if you see, when I see, this is the 34 EMA. Uh, it's a Fibonacci number. I like to use it um, really as a backstop, really. Uh, I see it as, a, as kind of a barrier to when I day trade and look at the eight bar exponential moving average. This is the, a lot of them call this the golden average and there's a number of different, the, the goddamn average, depending if, if it was, gave you a lousy yeah, the goddamn eight EMA. Um, but um, you can see how the eight EMA uh, really, the, the market, the pricing tends to ride that. You know, when it flips to another, to the other south side, tends to rise, it'll poke over. You know, mostly in in, um, in in tails and not bodies, but you'll and then when it flips like this, you start to think maybe it'll go the other way, and it does for a while. But it's this part that I want to point out: when the thirty-four and the and the um, uh, and the eight come together, right. and they start to separate with a trigger like this. This is a main. This is a major trigger in my view. It is a. Um, it is an engulfing pattern, a fully engulfing pattern, where all of these traders who went long uh, had a uh, are now um, losing money at the end of the next day, uh, and they find themselves on the south side of both the eight and the thirty-four. Um, if you even include this accumulation, a break of that accumulation, you know, has led to this, um, and, and so I always watch for. These are very sure situations where, where, um, and I, I've looked at other other moving averages, but I like the thirty four and the eight when they come together, and then they, uh, and then you see a, a movement. These are very highly, um, these are very highly um, probable yeah. moves. Uh, of course, on the initial break, the high, the highly probable move was to check uh, this particular, um, this recent low. Uh, which brings me to some of what I wanted to at least mention today about about what's going on in the market from the standpoint of you know conventional um, uh, conventional uh, 
analysis. And, and, and when, you know, when you see, if you look at the, the period of time between July and September and, and almost all and, and October, you're seeing the vast majority of your trades between the 4,400 and 4,600 level. I mean, that's where we've blocked it off here. Now I've just taken this high in this, this area and this low right here. Uh, and, and you know, the Japanese, uh, who, who Japanese farmers originally put together the, um, the candlesticks, they, they had very little regard for the tails, for the wicks, and, yeah. and major regard for the bodies. So, you know, if somebody's asking why I didn't draw my line here or why I didn't draw my line here, uh, if it if I wasn't on this uh, uh, program today, I probably would be drawing a second line here because sometimes you'll see markets trapped between uh, two particular lines. But I, I respect the, in fact, right even here, if you notice that I didn't draw my trend line through the bottom, I drew them through the through the bottoms of of this of these bodies here, and also I was also trying to get a parallel look to a major line that fell into place just by drawing an, a common line. I mean, when you when you, you draw a line, you see it hitting positively like this on the line and backing off. You've got a you've got a trend line that's going to be hard to be broken, and when it is broken, it's broken with gusto, as you see here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, which and I like to get them parallel because markets tend to form or although it may be crazy each day in the long term, markets tend to be very orderly. And this giant um, well, it's giant because it's uh, this particular chart looks giant. But but this downward movement in a very uh, orderly way um, and then the breakout higher uh, this, you know, many technicians, including me, would be looking for. Uh, if it continued the upside, uh, you know, to, to the previous high. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff going on here that I don't like, which mean, which, which tells me that um, we may not be um, getting there so fast, at least this week. Hence yeah. my, you know, my, 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 my guess at, at, you know, right between these two lines, right in this area. Um, I just see us as, you know, when, when you have uh, clear trend lines like this, um, and, and this this small body area, of course, starts to concern me. I'm sorry, my mouse is acting up a little bit. Uh, this small body area, um, it's either going to lead to another rush to the upside, which is very well could, or it's going to turn around and and, uh, and attempt this uh, the previous bottom line. So uh, there's a lot to there's a lot not to know about this chart, except for um, I think it's something that you could enter in without a whole lot of risk one way or the other i just think that yeah. there's a this may be a good trading week uh if you keep your your positions reasonably small um but i'm not sure that i i understand which direction it's going in quite yet or in any direction at all you know you know i'm not really a, <clears throat> an expert in the way you're handling things but there's a couple of things that hit me uh one is when the yellow and the white line separate uh significantly they tend to revert back toward each other. And the other thing is uh, there are so many green boxes on the way up, it's not unlike all those red boxes on the way down. <clears throat> and at some point you do exhaust uh, that one color for a while, let's just use that word. Um, and so the uh, <clears throat> there's no evidence of a turn here yet, but this is definitely a neighborhood where you'd be on guard for a reversion to the mean. Would that be a safe? Uh, yeah, I, I and I would even dovetail your thinking when you talk about uh, moving averages. When you when you see markets getting very far from a moving average, in this case, say the thirty four, you're going, you, you know, you're, you're going to see a snapback of some sort. Um, um, th this particular trigger here is one of th this is our main uh, loaded gun trigger. Uh, of which this would have been a very strong position for us to be taking and at least would have had a few bars in there until we hit the 34. Again, I, I see that many times as a barrier. But um, and if you break the barrier, the thing about barriers and you want to I wanted to do kind of slide in here, the mental and emotional part of, of trading, because um, when you have a resistance area, you know, when you're when you're thinking this thing is, you know, may just. Uh, if the market is coming up, it may just stall in this area uh, at the old high. Um, 
and, and then starts to break out. Right here, you have feelings that we're going to test the high. You put that in your mind right away. We're going to test the high of the market. We're breaking out. We're at least going to go to here. And it looks like we're going to test the high because we've had such a strong day. Uh, the thing about supports and resistances is they usually hold. They usually do hold. Um, you know, holding here, holding here. Uh, it, it, but when they do break out, they, they can have strong moves. And, and that that's a dilemma for a lot of traders, especially those that have a singularity on how they trade. In other words, just trading one position. If you have one position or you buy one, you know, one option or you buy one futures contract or you, or you buy five futures contracts or five options and you treat them as one position, um, you're, you're, in a, you're constantly putting yourself in a quandary when you have situations where a market looks like it's breaking out. And uh, if you felt that you were breaking out here and uh, the market started to move higher here uh, away from uh, right in with the, that line that you like, Jim, where you, you're right on the moving average, it looks like we should continue higher. Um, what do you do? Do you, do you, you know, to treat it as one position um, is not, I don't believe is the way to do it. I think you need to uh, give yourself both opportunities for profit. And uh, if I were trading the minimum, say, of two positions, I would be, um, you know, looking to, um, I, I would likely take a profit somewhere in here uh, in, where the market is right here, because I, I believe that this market has a higher, higher probability of backing off at this level than it does um, just because it is a, um, a level that's been tested uh, weekly this time, but established here. Uh, uh, you can see down here, there's a, a number of uh, investors or, or, or traders that are invested in this price action. So I see a lot of, I'm not surprised that we're, we're showing some hesitation in this area. And, and what do you do there with your dream of, of new highs in the market? Well, you get out of half yeah. and then now you're leaving the other half for, the, for your dream. And, and I think, you know, and, and the dream is a good dream. You have to have, you, you, you have to feel, you, you have to kind of have a, a notion of where you believe the market's going to go, but you can't act on it totally. You have to act on what the market is telling you. And you can get excited about it, which kind of keeps you in the market and keeps you in this game for the losses that you'll take along the way. But um, from a mental and emotional standpoint, I, I, would, I would ask everybody to consider having multiple positions when you put on a position, uh, which is going to require that you have a trigger that you have a um, that you have a trigger that you can rely on something that is when I say rely on I mean something that I that gives you a pop something that gives you that give, gives you your direction early in the life of the trigger so that you can take advantage of that initial I'm going to call it a scalp uh, I it's probably not a scalp because where I grew up, scalps were th three or four, you know, ticks, and that was it. You, you took your scalp. I'm talking about letting it move to a point of, of, uh, of resistance, and, and and knowing that that's probably going to be an area of, of resistance, and then going ahead and and uh, taking your your profit on half, and then using a stop um, process, whether it's following two two uh, two bars back. The low of two bars back, if you if you're long, or the high of two bar backs if you're short, uh, or some sort of a a process to trail and re retain the, the profit of the second position without uh, without um, you know giving away a whole lot uh, and without choking yourself. So you know you're gonna have to practice how that's that's done. But the idea of the mental part, because what happens if you don't do that is you're you're you're, you're putting yourself under a lot of stress, and you're gonna wind up getting out when the market has a down move. And starts moving against you, and you, uh, and and then it's going to move without you because you never did take that scalp that that God gave you, you know. So I, I think from a mental and emotional standpoint, uh, when I when I coach traders, once we work on using two, uh, at, at least a minimum of two positions, um, then um, on an initi initiating a trade, the really good things happen mentally, uh, and so I. I it's a long-winded way of saying, uh, again, pay attention to the mental part of the game. You know, looking at the uh, <clears throat> yellow and the white, they uh, can be used in concert, meaning uh, when the uh, market had a rally there in October, rather than getting excited about it, <clears throat> you would know that the white 
is keeping a bit of a cap on it. And you might have avoided getting too excited on that rally because the white uh, never changed direction. You're, you're big on the direction of the average, not just the average itself, correct? That's correct. And I, and I, uh, yes, I, I am, I am. And, um, but I, you can almost look at it at five different ways and come to the same conclusion, but yeah, that's what I am. And what's interesting here is that if I were, if I were short here, if I was short in that, that second position and wanted to stay until it broke the 34, let's say on the upside, um, you know, I would have stayed in because the, the backstop here would have kept me in that short trade. And right here, just like I showed you here, where you have a hesitation candle followed by a strong candle through the eight, you have that right here on the opposite way, a hesitation candle, either a, a doji or a small spinner like this, and then boom, a, 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 a strong can red candle to the downside. Not only are we uh, taking out the eight, but we're taking out a number of uh, five, five, five or six days of, of lows where we're surviving a test of the 30. This right here, this this would be something I always, um, and another thing that we'll, we can discuss at some other time, but I'll, I can't help but mention it is, and I think probably um, I call it the lost art of position sizing. You know, when I was uh, starting reading tapes and, and uh, when, when the machine was spitting out tapes, <laughs> back in the day, by, uh, you know, position sizing was what we were discussing, you know, what, how big you want to go. You know, that, that seemed to be a question that we always ask instead of always putting on two positions, always putting on two positions. I mean, if you think about it, when you get a scenario like this, moving averages together, um, um, now splitting apart, the, the, the trigger uh, the trigger that you like, that you've tested, that you, that you know is going to get your pop on multiple positions, how big do you go here? So I always have a range. I have a range of two to six positions that okay. I will take on in, yeah. in in the futures market, and and if I'm advising a smaller account, that could be a micro position in, in something right. like S and P. Right. Um, but um, those you know, micros are genius for people who want to limit the leverage because you know the leverage is what kills you if you're wrong. You know. Well, it also it also um, the leverage kills you if you're wrong, and it also um, um, it also is why people jump out the window when they're right. You know yeah. because they, they only made 10 bucks when they could have made 100 but you know but, but but i think it's almost not so much the leverage but the fact that you have you can take out multiple positions and scale them out in other words reduce your it's another technique of of, of staying out of harm's way um especially if you're gonna, if you're gonna overload uh, over leverage the account you might as well just play black or red at least you know you got a double if you're right and then you can play that kind of game with smaller money if you play, exactly if you play if you play the over leverage game with smaller money you're going to be on the alumni association pretty quick if you're wrong. <laughs> That's it. Well, so let's say I would take four positions here. And let's say I'd take four S&P positions here. I would be looking. Now, what I usually do, and, and this is just a technique that we use in, in Loaded Gun, and, and you can test it for yourself. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Um, the only one I'll take word for is Jim, but but don't take anybody's word for anything. <laughs> but but the, I, when you have a good trigger like this, um, generally uh, in this extension candle, you can expect a market movement in your favor equal to the size of the candle. Yes. So if I had four positions here, I would be taking out my, fir four, my first position here and holding three. And at that point, I would be putting my stop in. I would move all my stops from break even, which would be up uh, above this area here when I took the short trade. I would be moving it down to a uh, break even area on the remaining positions. And now I'm in a situation where I took a quick profit. And if it backs up, OK, it backs up. And it's not going to hurt me except for to um, you know, let me take a look for the next position. But I'm, I'm guaranteed a profit, so to speak. Well, the second, the second position, the, the, the second area I'd be looking for, of course, is the previous bottom here, of which I would likely take out two more positions and have only one left, of which I would be waiting for what I call lewd and lascivious, uh, which, you know, you're, you're in air down here for the most part. Right. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of accumulation here. So I would expect that, you know, that match with, that's why I would take out two and not one. Um, of the remaining three here. And, and you know, and, and you did get a little bit more, but, you know, as the market, you probably would have gotten out here in this area right here. So, uh, but the, my point is that when I handle trades, I'm getting in on strong triggers 
uh, and using multiple contracts. And if I can't take a multiple contract, I'll move to a market that I can. Um, and, uh, and in the micros, it's very easy to do the minis and micros. It's easier to do, of course, in the S and P and, and in mo most of the futures contracts now, uh, they have half contracts and even micro contracts in, in gold where it's 10 ounces. I mean, yeah, gosh, I noticed that. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, a. so here's a, this is, let's take a quick look at the uh, NASDAQ. Let's see if I think I have it down here. Yeah. But before we switch to NASDAQ, do you want to have one more question for you? Sure. Uh, the RSI, <clears throat> one uh, of the reasons I'm suspicious of the rally rather than <laughs> wanting to jump in with the mob right now, uh, like I said, at 4,100 and 4,200, you know, I'm a player, but at 4,600, you know, I'm a little more suspicious. So um, one of the reasons is the RSI on my long-term graphs, <clears throat> like the 20-year graph on mm -hmm. everything from Apple to NVIDIA to most of them have a divergence on the RSI where uh, the high that we made back in 21, mm -hmm. the RSI there compared to this brand new high RSI, there's a substantial divergence. And I notice on a lot of the graphs that we are having a hard time getting through 60, which I, uh, in my opinion, I'd love to hear your opinion. My opinion is that 60 neighborhood, you know, nothing's etched in concrete to the penny. That 60 neighborhood is either where you're going to get an acceleration to the upside or mm -hmm. the top, one or the other. And so basically, uh, because of the divergence on the long-term graphs, it seems to me like this new high stuff is like on NVIDIA. Every time mm -hmm. it goes to 500, I, I would love to sell it because it just seems like there's that divergence. Right. And it just doesn't seem to be able to sustain above 500. And there might be a reason for that. So, you know, the, the RSI uh, be unable to really break through 60, and then the divergence between the 2021 highs on the RSI to where we are now. And mm -hmm. even if you look at the RSI today, that certainly would not be a crazy neighborhood for it to have a reversion from the mean from. A crazy neighborhood, it would be, uh, you know, this is one of the things that I think it's, you know, a seasoned trader uh, is, is going to see pretty much right off the bat exactly. and, and throw up a caution flag. I mean, look, this is just this, this is the full year of trading here. And yeah. you can see that every time we've made a peak, that doesn't, you know, uh, don't confuse the, the peak of, of the RSI with the peak of the price. I'm sorry that I'm having trouble with my mouse today. Don't know what it is. Um, but uh, you can see that when we had, when we were up above the 60, 60 or 70 level here, right. uh, which is this line, uh, we failed. This wasn't a miserable failing, but we, we got, I mean, the market was very strong here. And, um, but again, could not survive much time uh, around that 70. And we haven't, even though we've had, peaks on the way down before that are um, that are uh, previewed by um, by a higher uh, RSI count. Uh, the fact that we I mean, were coming down, down, down here, and now we're here back at the 70, the market's flattening out. We're back at that area where where uh, there's going to there should be trouble in River City. And these are the basic this is your basic RSI measures of 14 and three. It's on anybody's chart. So, yeah, I, it's a it's a very good point. Uh, I, w I can't call it convert divergence, but I can say that, and, and th this is very interesting that you can bring this up because um, I think people have to be very careful that when they see 70, 75, 80, they don't jump to overbought right away because these are the times where markets can fly. No, no doubt about it. Yeah. This it's, a, of, it's a factor. It's a factor. Yeah. But the, the other thing is that the VIX is I got a 12 handle. Yeah. That's complacency on steroids, right? Yeah, it is. It is. So, I mean, I'm not, listen, I would never hit this thing until I get some evidence of a turn, like your yellow line or something like that, because right. you're not going to get a substantial drop unless the yellow line is pointing down. So if you are a patient guy, and I happen to be, I'm just, I just am on guard for the reversion possibility because of some of the items we've been talking about. Right. And, and um, you know, it's it's those people who listen to the news too much um, you know, there's just so much chaos uh, that uh, not only the wars that are going on now, but, uh, you know, the, the, what's going on in Congress and so on, yeah. that you can be expecting and bring those same nervous intentions to the market. And um, therefore, I know that my wife <clears throat> won't, she won't let us watch any kind of news after about six o'clock because it affects her sleep, you know, <laughs> so, right. and, and, and probably oh, yeah. mine too. So I thought that was a pretty good rule she put into place for our lives, you know, don't listen to any, no news after the daytime, you know, 
Um, but yeah, this is a market that's uh, that's likely to do something. I think we people just have to be patient and wait. Um, and people who are spending money during Christmas, of course, which is pretty much everybody during this season, uh, you know, you, you kind of want to make money here. So this party really kind of wants to get in and get out quickly and grab a little guilt. But yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and, and the, that NASDAQ is looking about the same. This is, um, uh, again, the yearly look at uh, the NASDAQ. And you can see the same same kind of numbers that we're talking about, same kind of, uh, of breakout here. Um, but again, we're, you know, we're much closer to the high here. Uh, did we hit it the other day? No, it didn't look. It no, the high is in the uh, high 4,600s, uh, 4,500s. Yeah, it just missed it. But yeah, um, so I think we've we've pretty much exhausted this. I think people are going to have, and I'm, I'm sure some of the major stocks look pretty similar to this. Um yeah, even on your low point there, Norm, you know, when we were at the, the 4,100 neighborhood, that's a huge new low. And if you go down to the RSI, there was no new low on the RSI. So you're, you you wouldn't maybe buy there, but certainly yeah. when the yellow line turns up in the 4,200, you're going to get on the train. Yeah, right. And, and, and similar, similar seeing... to this, you know, you're up here at 46, uh, 4568. Obviously, you don't want to step in front of something with no evidence of weakness. But mm -hmm. if you started getting some signs, you know the VIX is at 12. You know the yellow line is way away from the white line. You know you know uh, the uh, parabolic move, you know, uh, has exhausted a certain amount of buying. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, 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 this is a crazy move right here. I mean, yes. I don't know, you know, even historically, I mean, this is a, when you look at it, what is this, 12% or something? It's, it's, it's a good 12% move, isn't it? 4,100 to 4,600? Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's that's. And, the, yeah, it's really a lot of it is based on that uh, that uh, the Fed is done and the inflation is licked and uh, earnings are going to be fabulous, which would mean the consumer's not going to back off. Uh, the Fed is going to be very patient with uh, everything, and uh, you know then uh, the fiscal deficit is going to get resolved well. So you know there's a lot of uh, shall we say uh, happy outcomes that might be priced in here. Huh? Well, I think the last statement may be a dream about the fiscal, about the, the trillions being uh, in debt for the federal government being solved anytime soon. But, yeah. um, you know, but it, it, if the fact that it's not increasing at the pace that it was because we seem to be getting a little bit more responsible as far as, um, you know, the parties forcing us and uh, forcing us to at least think about it, um, that, um, that, that, that you may be right. I mean, all we used to do is look at the M1. I haven't heard anybody yeah. mention that in a long time. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, when you put out that much money during COVID and uh, <laughs> you know, helping people, uh, uh, you know, get through that period of time, you just can't suck that money back. I heard something interesting the other day, though, that I thought was kind of a, a little bit of a red flag to some of the employment um, numbers that have been coming out. And, and that's the fact that uh, it seems like now that when when a when you lose your job in the in the uh, in the tech area that you you generally just can't jump to another job that they're eliminating the jobs that they're 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 firing and they're replacing it and starting to replace it with the AI type of situation so it's going to be very interesting to see you know this whole transition of the industrial revolution to the technological revolution of course we're deep into that right now right and um you know the the retraining I mean you can't be a coal miner right now and expect to um, you know, have a, a career that's going to be booming for the for the next ten or fifteen years. Right. Um, you know, you but but who wants to be forty five or fifty six, fifty five years old at in the middle of their career or to, toward the last third and have to retrain for something? You know, yeah. a new a whole new kind of uh, experience. So it's very very hard. Uh, I don't think we uh, as a country in the world really hasn't been prepared for uh, that transition as far as education is concerned. I mean, we can't even. We can't, we can't even educate our kids. It's just it's another. You know, uh, Norm, uh, when you think about it, the way we exported all our jobs to China, look what happened to Ohio and everywhere. And then if we export all our jobs to AI, that could be the, the last thing to kick us in the knees. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, editing AI is, is at least an interim step that people can kind of look to to take their old uh I mean, I, I. What about copywriters and 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 you know, you, you may take a, a, a 
a profession like that, but there's a lot of a lot of people who write things, put them in print in different ways, and and have people read them. And and uh, you know that, that there's just a lot of you know there's ten percent of the population in that band that um, you and know. When, a, when AI comes up with different uh, written forms, uh, it may be involved in uh, copyright infringement to put the information in there. Correct. Well, the whole uh, the, the whole actor strike and uh, so yeah. on was, was based on uh, what, what they're going to have as far as residuals uh, in that respect, you know. Hey, I was going to try to get to three markets at least briefly because I know you're, uh, you know, very well aware of all of them and they're kind of big markets. Uh, the first one is going to be on gold. Can you uh, give us some ideas on yeah. what you're seeing on gold? Okay. Yeah, well, actually, this is silver here. Let's look at gold. And silver, obviously, but uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think most, anybody most who trades, follow the gold. yeah, most most people follow the gold. You know, most people follow the gold. Uh, that uh, when you're looking at, um, uh, you know, buying Kruger as I think, but I, I think most traders who've been around at least uh, have a uh, have a pension for the silver because of uh, you know how it tends to outperform gold in these in these big moves. But here's, uh, you know, here's a gold chart that's. You know, it really is kind of screaming higher prices, uh, and um, we're still on S and P right now. Oh, are we really? No, yeah. this is the gold right here. Oh, there it is. Okay, my space yeah. yeah, this is the gold, and, and I mean, if there was a classic uh, head and shoulders bottom, I think you're pretty much looking at it. Yeah, we've got a, a double yeah. dip here, but and the I mean, Elliott guys are saying that 1800 is the end of the C wave, and we're on a five waves to the upside, which is going to take us into new highs. I happen to subscribe that that could be happening. Yeah, I, I think so too. There's a number of things that uh, um, you know most traders or most people that are entering the market, most new traders uh, would be under the impression that gold tends to lead. An inflationary environment, and it 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 can it tends to be the other way around. In my experience, that uh, that 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 really, when you get an inflation that's sticky like this one may be, this is when gold really starts to move. So I would be looking on the upside of the gold market. Uh, you can see uh, how resistant we are <laughs> to getting there. This over the last uh, last six months, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, one, I, I, one other thing, Norm, I was going to say that uh, might be interesting is the commitment of traders is showing that large traders and hedge funds, which generally to be trend followers, don't mm -hmm. have large positions in this yet, which mm -hmm. uh, unlike NVIDIA, where everybody from the garbage man to the bird catcher uh, mm -hmm. has a position in NVIDIA, there is plenty of, shall we say, dry powder that could come in here if they start seeing the trend develop, you know? Yeah, no, that's uh, the, the you know you you do definitely have to look at the short positioning. I you know I, I think any kind of southerly move here could could give us what we want, uh, or at least bore, boredom uh, as it as it may go sideways. But but here's that same uh, this is the weekly chart. Here's that same um, head and shoulders type affair, and you can see it really really pronounced here in its you know defining move right here where. Uh, where Elliot got excited right, right around this eighteen hundred dollar level, um, but you know I, I'm always looking again for the basics. I'm always looking for where this thing could hold up, and and you know be it, it's you can I, I don't draw a lot of lines because I, you know when you're trading long enough you can kind of see them. Yeah. Um, but um, you know if I draw a line here, look at all this in the past. So you know once we break through here, you know this would be our next area. Of course, somewhere in in that in, in the um, uh, this particular high, I like to I like to draw two lines: one where I'm looking at the bodies, and one where uh, where I got the extremes. And then you've got a so I've had three or four lines in here as we move higher. So again, on long term positions, we'd be taking a very small position. This this may be you know for for a twenty thousand dollar portfolio. Uh, or thirty thousand dollar, forty, fifty thousand dollar board. This, this may be an area where you want, you may want to take some micros, uh, multiple micros, maybe five micro positions where you're controlling fifty ounces of gold. Uh, just to give you an example, and and when we when we break out here in this area, we, you would be looking to rescue some of your, take your profit on some of your golds here, and as the market moved higher. Uh, you would have a, a few remaining positions. You know, this is the 
this is the high probability area. I mean, the, the less you ask from a market, the more you're likely to get it. I mean, that that's and yellow uh, and gold just crossed. That can't be a negative. Oh yeah, no, that's gonna well. Uh, you know, I, I forgot who I'm talking to. <laughs> and the other thing is, I'll bring to your attention is, is if you do gold stocks like I do, uh, you go out to March of next year or April of next year, you got limited risk, you got leverage, and you have uh, a situation where if this thing does pop, the, uh, maybe those gold shares would pop. Some of them have already matriculated to the upside pretty good. So, uh, you know, that's something that I would at least suggest people take a look at is, you know, a limited risk position. Uh, the options were very cheap in my view. And, uh, and then you don't have to worry about, <clears throat> you know, forced liquidation, margin calls. And if there is a substantial move like that ABC five waves up, uh, mm -hmm. I think the end of the calendar year, the beginning of the new year is when some of that happens quite often. What's your feeling on that timing? You know, I, I, I like the timing. And I, I if, if I, um, you know, one note about timing is that generally, uh, uh, stocks that are related to, you know, the mining stocks generally will hesitate just a little bit before they'll follow the the underlying gold price. Right. Um, but in that, I mean, this I'm not, now I'm looking at the monthly chart. You can see that, you know, over the years, this thing, um, you know, we've built a nice base. We've taken off from that base and we're building another nice base. This, this is where what gold likes to do. Um, and, and so, but, but look at the size of these candles. Um, as opposed to the size of, of the even the candles down here. So you know, there's a lot of interest. And this shows me that there's a lot of interest in seeing this go one way or the other. So yeah. just a quick peek at the monthly, just for fun, if I even uh, have enough. Uh, I'm sorry, this is the monthly, the yearly. Uh, it's going to be look a little sloppy, but let's see if I, uh, I've got some. Uh... Yeah, it's not giving me much, but you can see where um, we're, we're butting up against an area where if we break through, we could have some, um, you know, some uh, some reasonable upside. Uh, but where would you go with, I mean, we used to look at Homestake, ASA. I mean, yeah, you know, I, mean I, I, have, <clears throat> I have a couple here uh, that are already panning out quite well. One is Harmony uh, Gold, HMY. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's gone already from 440 to 592. It's up another two and a half percent today. So I'm certainly mm -hmm. happy I got in at four. <laughs> Um, and then also uh, there's uh, uh, Gold Fields, GFI. Ah, uh, right. And that also has a very nice looking trend. And that's up 2.83% uh, today. And it's gone from uh, just in the last month, 1240 to 1380. So uh, the bigger ones you're talking about, like Newmont Mining, mm -hmm. you know, they bought this new Crest company, but, you know, I'm in there as well. But, uh, and they may have a lot more potential because, you know, if you look at a 20 year graph, uh, it's gone from eight, uh, 85 down to as low as 35, and now it's trading at 38. So if this thing is for real, and they are one of the largest gold companies in the world now that they bought Newcrest, obviously it's worth a look. But I went with the ones where the trends are already going up, like your charts. Right. <laughs> because I'm from, right. the school, I'm from the school if I want to join a ongoing concern. And, uh, and uh, Newmont isn't hitting me totally as an ongoing concern. It's more of a, yeah, it's very cheap. It also pays 4% dividends. So you're getting 4% dividend as long as they pay it. Right. Uh, while you're waiting for this thing to turn around. So Yeah, uh, but, and, and some would say it's, it sucks out a little bit of the pricing life yeah. when you're giving 4%. But still, when they go, they all go. I and mean, this is a chart you're of right silver. You're right about that. <laughs> the, the chart of silver. Um, and you can see how... Um, this has this is that same head and shoulders, a little sloppier um, in the silver, but you can see that it's already broken the neck. Yeah, uh, which is exciting some people about what's what may be happening in gold. Now, um, uh, silver can easily have a fifty percent up day, and then it's followed by a fifty cent down day. It happens all the time. Exactly. In silver and, and uh, so I, you know, I'd be paying attention to the next. Um, resistance level up here. We could get up here really without, we almost tried it without really seeing gold break out. But any kind of, uh, of sustaining the prices in this area, uh, when gold starts to follow, that's another indicator when they start moving together. Yeah, uh, two, uh, two silver stocks that I um, <clears throat> very much are involved with is Hecla Mining HL, which is a cheapie at four bucks and change. Always like and Hecla. Other, and the other one is Pan, Amer Pan American Silver. Uh, and that's, uh, 
but they haven't taken off like this silver price. But you, like you were saying, sometimes they're the laggard. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, silver above twenty six looks like it schools out. Silver, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, yeah above twenty six. I mean, we've seen thirty already in in, uh, in silver. Uh, back in this area, here is twenty seven and change. Uh, back in uh, what area is that? Just a just a, a year and a half ago. So this, um, my charts don't go back that far. Uh, in this particular, uh, in, with um, Ninja Trader, I, I also trade with the, the Trade Station. Um, but yeah, this is a, let's let's take a look. You you mentioned uh, the. Um, uh, well, what about the Japanese yen? Because I know you're very much focused on that. And for people who are not, the Japanese yen has lost over half of its value. So obviously, uh, it's at a very much of a price to at least take a look at. And uh, I think it's lost twenty percent in the last uh, few months. Now, I, I mean, look at that. But it turned it turned up. I know. I I just I don't know the current situation. I did notice that it had a real tank job at one point. Yeah, and I'm in a losing trade today on these on the Japanese yen. Um, I, I'm doing some scale trading. I'm not scale trading. That's another discussion. Now I'm doing some um, prop trading. As you know, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of. I think it's the best thing that ever happened, especially to the small uh, small trader, where um, firms are actually funding traders for and giving them ninety percent of the profit. And they do that because they charge monthly fees while you're qualifying. Right. And um, and they know that ninety percent won't qualify, so they just right. sit there collect fees based on your dream. But again, if you're, a, if you're a trader that has had some success or if you're playing around break even for a while and uh, you, you, want, um, and you want to take some of that stress off uh, and, 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 and start to do it right, um, start to show up on your mental game, then, then why would you risk your own money when you can do this? I've already qualified for six trading accounts, uh, anywhere from 50 to 150,000. When I'm, I'm, I'm uh, by this time next month, I'll have a million dollars in, in their money that I'll be trading. And I'll be looking to, um, to I'm focusing now on qualifying, and then I'll focus on trading that money that qualified. But I want to, and that's really where my, where I've been helping traders in the last, uh, this last year. But I, I, I like, um, this is the Japanese yen. You can see, I mean, wow. I mean, Japanese yen has always been a horizontal uh, line because, you know, they could never get out of their own way from a recession. They were always been in a slight recession for decades, literally. Um, and uh, I'm not sure exactly. I, I think, I, I can't believe I can't remember exactly what the situation is in Japan, but it has to, are you familiar with it? It has to do oh, they, with- they, they had the yield uh, curve control, so they were buying yes. all their own bonds. In fact, when they have an auction, they are the only buyers of it. Again. Right, right, it, it, right, right. They're, they're kind of self-sustaining. Well, look, look at what, what, what's happening to the, again, uh, the reason is is interesting and it, it's good for park cocktail parties, but uh, but for trading, you got to look at, at what's going on here. It tried, it tried right here to make things happen and failed. Um, and we're trying again right here to make things happen. Uh, my 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 problem with this um, attempt is this trigger right here, um, which of course is is a sixty seven percent trigger, sixty eight sixty seven percent right in that two thirds area, um, where and I always like a tail with my formations, which leaves a lot of people behind. If you're, if you're long, it leaves, so it favors the short side. We may have exhausted a lot of that here, um, but when you, now we're back to the south side of where we've been this whole time. And, you know, new traders always looking to be the person who buys here and the market goes up, uh, uh, you know, to record highs and they, they retire on this one trade. But it usually doesn't happen like that. Um, I, I got short on a, a very small positioning, on, and, and even though in prop trading you can't um, hold positions overnight, uh, and when five o'clock comes, I offset, and then six o'clock I put it back on. But a very small position, the the, the micro positions in the a couple of them in a fifty thousand dollar account, because this is still an if you know an iffy thing and. Um, and overnight, crazy things can happen. So you want to, you know, you're in a, you're, when you put yourself in a in a uh, in a time zone of risk, which is when you start trading overnight, 
um, then you 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 need to really reduce your position size, no matter how strong the indicators are. But my personal opinion is that uh, we should be seeing some downside here to once again test uh, this low, which usually requires at least a double, which it's given us here, but mostly a triple. So uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, look at this. Uh, you know, anybody, and all along the way, you know, new new traders have been, here's two in a row. Oh, we got to, this thing looks like it's going, you know. Uh, now, this is one of our triggers, right? Small bodies, strong move through the eight. This would have gotten you your yeah. first scalp. And then, um, you know, maybe break even on the rest. Or when you started to see this action, maybe you take out two or three more of the four or five positions, micros that you had or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, if, if I think if anybody takes anything from this, discussion that we've been having about markets in general and about the position. I think it's the advent, the advantage of looking to take smaller positions and multiple positions and treating some as a scalp against a very strong trigger. And I think that if you, if you, if you make that a, a must in your trading plan, I think you're going to start to uh, get off, off that uh, break even line and, and right. onto, onto profit. But look that, at this. If that yellow line were to get above the white after such a long downtrend, and people like Buffett are buying the heck out of Japan. And then Japan actually has inflation now a bit. Uh, there could be quite a uh, uh, quite an opportunity if they change that, that relationship between the yellow and the white line. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see what happened here when the market, it, 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 it used really, I mean, getting over that line uh, over the 34 just used up all its energy. And, um, and the and white is flattening, which is the first prelude to stopping, right? You know, I gotta, I'm glad I came on today where we weren't interrupted by a third guru. Well, because because you what you've taught what you've you really reminded me to take to take a little bit more account of the direction, you know, of the pitch of, yeah. of, of these lines, because it really is telling. It really is telling. Yeah. Um, then you get the cross and then you get the confirmation. So it's yeah. all very plain unless you put emotion into it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, now that we're near the top of the hour, I wanted to make sure everybody understands that <clears throat> there are many things you can do for them. Uh, help them with the mental part is a great thing. And helping them with some uh, systemic way of approaching the market is obviously great. Sizing your position and trading out of the size, that's great. But I think one of the biggest things is you help people with this prop trading uh, uh, focus so that they could qualify and then also afterwards, you can help them try to uh, trade the money, uh, you know, or try to come up with decisions on trading the money. Uh, so that's really good. Why don't you explain that a little bit more? Because, you know, free money into your account. Yes, you have to pay monthly, but, you know, you're paying monthly as an investment that you think you'll be able to uh, qualify for. It's not like you're paying money for nothing. Yeah, and it's not a lot of, um, uh, for most people start, and I, I suggest that people start with a $50,000 qualifying right. account. Right. It can go as low as 25, 50 is small. Uh, I, I, actually, the 150s have a better, what you, what you have to win and what you can lose. In other words, in the $50,000 account, you've got to make $3,000 to qualify before you lose 2,500. And it's not, not just the 20, but 2,500 from your greatest high as you've been trading. So you can't, um, um, in, in any event, without getting into the weeds, the idea is that if you can make $3,000 before you lose $2,500, you, 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 they will actually fund your account and actually give you 90% of the profit that you make from then on it. So, and why do they do that? Because they know that along the, while you're qualifying, as soon as you sign up, start trading the $50,000 account. Incidentally, they pay through not only your platform, but for the data also. There's no data cost. It's only the uh, anywhere from $167 a month for $50 account to $50,000 account to um, uh, to uh, $17 a month because right now they're running a 90% discount on the monthlies. So there's no. Re I wrote a paper called "The Death of Simulated Trading." I mean, why would anybody have, try simulated trading only just to start to risk their own money or somebody do do the think about the prop trading where you're using your demo and if you pass your, your demonstration phase you you now have fifty thousand dollars to trade so it's a it's kind of a a, a, a a step that I think every every especially small trader would take because most tr small traders they're starting with five or ten or twenty thousand dollars very very hard 
especially speculating futures and even in the stock market speculation to to make money. You've got to uh, you've got to think small. You've got to think big, but trade small. That that's really how to make money in the market. Um, but but you can't go very small enough, really, when you're only trading five thousand dollars. And so the tension is already there. Well, there is a lot to learn here. So why don't we get your uh, contact information out? Because I, for one, uh, know that many people would benefit from knowing about this. And there's a lot of uh, you know turns to it. And you already know how it works. So that's the they should call you. How are they going to get a hold of you? Okay. Um, what what I would do is I would go to the disciplined and the you need the T H E the disciplined trader dot com. You go to the disciplined trader dot com, and you um, and, and right at the top near the top of the page you'll see an opt in where you can get my four minute drill for traders. I've recorded over two hundred four minute drill for traders, and they're mostly about the the getting right between the eyes. If you like my style and my no BS kind of style. Listen, this is doable, but you have to you have to shake yourself into sensibility on how it's doable, because we're we're all you know Jim's doing it, I'm doing it. It's not it, it's it, it it's not rocket science, but it, it does take a little bit of knowledge. But most of you have that already if you've been battling these markets for any length of time. So opt in at the disciplinetrader.com. Uh, opt in for the um, the four minute drill for traders. That will put you on my list. And you'll you'll get emails about my how I've been educating uh, traders on the mental and emotional part, as well as on helping them qualify for uh, for these prop trading accounts, which is really my my current love. In fact, uh, I've got a, a Monday I've got a, a Cyber Monday um, thing on how to uh, it's for one hundred ninety seven dollars. You can uh, you can uh, I give you the tips on how to pass these uh, qualifying uh, phases. And um, I'll give you the five tips that, that I think are important for you to, to either adjust your trading plan or use mine to do it. So uh, that's available right now. So if you, if you were to jump on right now and, and, um, and, and sign up, there'll be one or two more emails going on about that. But uh, I've really enjoyed being here. And of course, David and, and you have always run this uh, so well. So I appreciate being here. Okay, thanks, Norm. And like I say, uh, if you want to know more about it, uh, you go to somebody who's already been there, and that's Norm. As far as option trader is option professor is concerned, I do have a link to the indicators I use to figure out when to determine market direction. And I also spend one hour online with you explaining what you're looking at. So if you're interested in finding out how I do it, give me a call. Uh, go, go online, optionprofessor.com, put in your contact information, and we're all set. A little bit over time, David, but uh, we went over a lot of good stuff. So that's the main thing. Back to you. Yeah, great discussion. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so just a quick reminder, um, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast app. Uh, or uh, Timing Research is also available on Substack now. Um, or you can just go straight to timingresearch.com to get access to any of the past shows and presentations. Um so I just want to thank my guests again for today, uh, Norman Hallett of thedisciplinetrader.com and the option professor of optionprofessor.com. Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, guys.